Eric here from 5minuteinvesting.com and today we're going to talk about a very frustrating topic, stop losses. I have so much frustration with stop loss over the years, it's unbelievable. Every time I enter it, it can be too tight, you get stopped out, or it's too wide, you lost a lot of money. And it's almost impossible to get stop loss right because it's more like an art than science. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, before I dive into this question, I just want to let you know that there's a bunch of free stuff down below the description, so be sure to check it out. Uh, those are the things that you can get to help accelerate your investing career. So let's start. Stop losses. Now, for those of you who don't know what a stop loss is, when you enter at a certain price, let's say $9, and if the trade goes against you, let's say it goes from, sorry, $10. It goes from $10 to $9 and you want to exit. Instead of doing it manually and tracking the market, you can set a stop loss to tell the computer or the broker to execute the trade and sell it off at nine. So that means if the price goes from 10 to nine, the moment it goes from 10 to nine, you're out of there. So it's a great protection mechanism. Now, the problem with that is and the concept that I struggled for many years was what stop loss really means. Now, let's say you intend to hold a trade for a year. Now, okay, a year is not too long as 365 days, 200 trading days if we want to be more specific. And if you set a stop loss at $35 or $9 and you entered it at 10, what you're really saying is you believe that out of the 365 days, price will not dip below $9. Out of all the days, not a single day. Now that's very important because it's absolute. It's every single day. And when you think about, when you think about that, what is the probability of the stock never dipping below $9 for 365 days is small, right? So that actually works against me most of the time. Let's say I get my analysis right, but then um, the market didn't react to it right away. Of course, the market will never react to your analysis right away because you're looking at some time in the future where it's a temporary problem being resolved or um, the company will continue to grow in the future. Whatever you're looking at, it will be in the future. So then right now, the price has a very high probability of hitting your stop loss unless your stop loss is wide enough. For example, you bought it at $10 and you sold it at five. Then you might be able to argue that I'm very confident that 100% of the time for the next 365 days that the price will never go to $5. But it, again, you're putting a lot of money on the table. You're willing to risk 50% of whatever you put in. So what is the solution? The solution is using stock options. When I look at stock options, I don't worry about, oh, it's, it's a right for you to buy a share in the market or the omega or the theta or the delta in the equation. So if you're familiar with black shorts, you'll know what I'm talking about. But there's a lot of math behind calculating the value of an option. All I worry about is how much am I putting on the table and how much I can get back. And if you focus on that, you will understand and you will have a lot better time investing in options. So let's say um, I invest in a stock that's 100 bucks. I need to put a hundred bucks down, correct? Then I said, okay, I'm willing to risk 10 bucks out of a hundred. So I set a stop loss as 90. So if the price hits 90, I'm out of there. So then my risk is $10, right? A hundred minus 90 equals 10. But this statement, a hundred percent of the time the stock will not dip below 90, is very, very bold. So here's what happens when I use stock options to invest. I said, okay, I want to risk 
So I start with what I'm willing to risk, which is $10, which is the same as the previous example. Then I will buy $10 worth of stock options and the strike is at 90. So what does that mean? It means that if my option goes to zero, I just lose $10. And I only spend $10 on this stock buying the options. So that means I have $90 left to invest in something else. And the best thing about options is that if the price temporarily dip below 90 for like one day, my option might be worth nothing, but the mar I will still be in the market. So that means maybe the next day, the price shot up and it's 110, I will still be in the trade because for the next year, regardless of where the price is, I'll still hold on to this option. I don't get what they called stopped out by the market. And that is very important because the market is getting more and more volatile. So the chances of using options and getting, sorry, the chances of using stop loss and getting stopped out is really, really high. And in fact, Forex, the foreign exchange market is so volatile that I find very little success if you set a very tight stop loss. Now I know a very famous investor used stop loss successfully, but it's just a lot of pain to go through. And if you can use options, it might cost a little bit more, but you don't get stopped out. And if your expectation is that the trade will happen in the next two years, why don't you just use stock options? It's fantastic. It does what it needs. It protects you from the downside. Like if the market really goes against you, all you ever lose is $10. And the best part is that you still have $90 to invest in another nine companies. Whereas before, if you use $100 to invest in one company, your money is tied up. And that's why I invest in stock options. So leave a comment below if you have any questions. And we always pick a winner for our technical analysis course. So if you're interested in that, leave a comment below as well and click subscribe.